Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations at the Salt Marsh or on cable, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. So if that's like you, then we're, we, want, we're, we want to help you know who the people are you need to know and the, what the programs are that you need to know about in order to do exactly that, to stay right here on Nantucket. So with me is my wonderful co-host, Allison Forsgren, who I, I, always, it, we've been doing this like just for a long time now, for like years, and, but she continues to get us these great guests to talk about just these issues. And I think our guest this month is just, is, is, this is a really important topic and it's a wonderful guest. So Allison, whom do we have? Well, first of all, I'll give a little background. Um, I, I was able to, I was very fortunate to book this guest um, relatively just a few days ago um, after meeting her in my, at my neighborhood outdoor holiday bonfire. Um, little did I know that I was living several doors up from Kelsey Gray, um, who is our guest today. She is the nurse manager for, the, for Nantucket um, for the Visiting Nurses of Cape Cod, which covers you know, Cape Cod and the islands. So she is also the, the primary hospice nurse and who knew she lived right down the street. So um, Kelsey, thank you so much for being my neighbor and joining the show. Um, we've got, we'd love to hear what you do and how you do it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Kelsey, thanks a million. And as, as, as we had mentioned earlier, I get the one question I get to ask in these shows is, so how did you get here exactly? Because, you know, Nantucket is filled with, you know, people who are there from there and some who are not. So how did right. you end up on Nantucket? So I grew up on Nantucket. Um, ooh, I, ooh, <laughs> I went to the new school the whole way through and then to the high school for a couple years, went to boarding school, came back, um, went to college, came back. Finally, as an adult, we said, we're done with Nantucket. We moved off island and lasted a whole six months. <laughs> <laughs> came back um and you know we we were we found this gift of a house that was a foreclosure um in an online auction and we won it in 2018 2019 march of 2019 i think and um you know we're so grateful to be in this great little neighborhood on nantucket and we get to call it our home forever <laughs> That is, that's great that's great so thank thank you for that so now i'm just going to reiterate as allison was saying so you know, kind of what are you doing and 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 how can people be connect with you how can people be helpful just in general right so i'm the clinical nurse manager for the nantucket team of the visiting nurses of cape cod and with that we cover both home health and hospice so i am the primary hospice nurse and then under um, me we have a good group of physical therapists occupational therapists some nurses um, a health aid and you know we are a insurance driven company so we do work um, with insurance policies we're never a long-term solution per se, where some of the other private agencies, you're looking at your 24 hour care. We're more the acute um, in terms of home health. We're the acute, like you just discharged from the hospital having a pneumonia episode, or you just discharged from the hospital having a knee replacement. And we come in and help you as an elder learn how to be independent in your own care. And when you are independent again in your own care, then we discharge. Then we have the opposite route of things with hospice, where we can stay in longer term and give more benefits and a little bit more assistance because we're talking about closer to end of life. Wow. So um, people are referred to you by their healthcare provider, or how do you actually sign up to be? client of the visiting nurses? Yeah, so well, most of our patients we're getting directly in, in under home health. We are getting most of our patients directly discharging from Nantucket Hospital, Mass General, wherever they've been. Um, whether that be that, like I said, you know, you had a complex pneumonia that required admission. Um, you have a CHF exacerbation. You have um, a knee or hip replacement. We get a lot of those directly 
post-discharge, we go in, typically our goal is within 48 hours of discharge and we can bring in whatever you need, nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, your health aid. Um, and with that, our goal is to be there to support you until you're able to, again, do that yourself. So we work under your insurance to provide you the care that you need so that you can be home rather than potentially having to go to a rehab um, or something like that, that would be an inpatient. And of course, I think most people's goal would be to be home. <laughs> right. So then additionally, we do get some referrals from directly from like Dr. Pearl, Dr. Lepery, whatever, you know, if you have a wound or if you have um, just an episode that didn't necessarily require an ER trip, um, but they need someone to just go in and check on you. We can do like a safety evaluation also um, to make sure everything is smooth going in the house and we go in just time for like a one-time safety eval, depending on what the doctor orders. Hmm. Um, and, so, and what, go ahead. So, um, so the um, Council on Aging just received a grant to help install um, things that would help people stay at home longer um grab bars little ramps to get over door things right and we're that's wondering, awesome yeah and we're we were just talking about this yeah um you know how how we could find people who required or needed those services and what exactly would those services entail do you for instance work with um with elder services so we work with elder services. I'm talking to Sherry Hunt regularly um, and, and working on that, those pieces. And when we start to talk about like discharge, we need to know that there is a safe discharge plan from us. So with that, we're typically bringing in people, whether it's from elder services, whether it's from tucked in or um, private care. Um, and then those people are going to step in essentially for us for that long term. Um, we work a lot with the Masons group who have all the equipment and they help with the donations and things. But, you know, we were just talking about this in the office yesterday, knowing that there was this grant, um, trying to figure out if there was maybe a better way that we could expand the role of people who do the equipment delivery, um, and do the setup, you know, we're so So we're so lucky that Buzz will come over on a Saturday afternoon and throw in a ramp for somebody. But, you know, that's not always a same day thing because he has a real job, too. So maybe if we could make that a bigger group of people that were doing those deliveries and pickups, you know, with that grant, um, you know, it'd be a good opportunity for the community. Mm -hmm. I see, because because on, on Nantucket, the Masons kind of have a lot of this kind of equipment, which they kind of loan to people while they while they're not not well. Absolutely. And, and they do it, you know, completely for free and they, and they lend it out and families, I, we always recommend that they donate to them. Um, you know, especially after our hospice patients pass, they take a lot of the equipment, the way the elder services used to. Now, my understanding is elder services is not stocking and lending the equipment the same way they used to because of their um, like limited staff and all of that. And the Masons kind of took it over. And, and when you, and when you were talking about the work that you do, and you then you refer to discharge. And it's it's funny because you don't for the average person you don't think you think of being discharged from a hospital. You don't think of being right. discharged from like the VNA. So right. so and and there's and and I was unaware of that. So there's actually you folks actually do like discharge planning as part of the work that you're doing at home because you're just basically saying, you know, here's this person who has met met the goals that we had set for her in terms of her getting better. And now she's kind of like plateaued, but maybe she's plateaued at a place where she really can't be safely at home, just at home anymore, right? And so now what? And now, you, and so that's what that discharge plan is. It's just connecting with these other, with other players. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's pulling in family, it's pulling in friends, it's pulling, pulling in like what people are eligible for under elder services, potentially mass health, any of that kind of thing, trying to bring in the long-term solution so that you can stay home safely. We never are going to jump out of a case that is seeming unsafe. Um, when we're talking about, you know, the knees and the hips replacements, those are pretty straightforward. You know, you have your patient who's homebound, whether Medicare or, or you know, just your average commercial insurance, right? And 
they're homebound because they're post-op and they do their physical therapy and then they graduate on to outpatient physical therapy. So then we discharge because they're able to get in and out of the home safely. Now it is a little bit more complicated uh, with people who, like we were talking about, have the new pneumonia. Maybe they went home on oxygen. Now our goal might be that they don't have to be on oxygen forever, but they're going to be on oxygen for a month. So we're going to be there and make sure they know how to manage it. A family member or a caregiver knows how to manage it. And then once that's all set and maybe they graduate off of it because they're doing better, then we can safely discharge. So and we so have to be following like a skill. There has to be a skill in the home that we are teaching someone. Medicare has really made a lot of changes that where we used to go in and provide care, our goal is to go in and teach you how to care for yourself. Wow. I think that's, I think that's a, a good way to look at it. I mean, and also um, sharing information with caregivers so that they can be doing the right thing instead of what they always thought was was right. Um, now I have a question. Um, I'm a I'm a volunteer for PASCON, and back yes. when they were um, Hospice Foundation of Nantucket, there was a little bit different connotation. So they decided to change to Palliative and Supportive Care on Nantucket PASCON, um, which is a free service. Um, it's a wonderful service. We have a new director, volunteers that are trained to actually go into homes and assist, um, well, no, post COVID, the, COVID has really stuck a pin in our balloon when it comes to what we can do to help mm -hmm. um, our clients. But um, there is a difference between hospice and palliative care, especially when it comes from PASCON. Do you know anything about that or? Um, you know, I know that, so, so how, do, how do hospice patients find their way into your service? So PASCON um, is working with, you know, pass, really anyone who needs palliation of any symptom, whether that's chronic illness, so someone who has COPD, um, the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, someone with, um, you know, chronic heart failure, any of those kind of things that need symptom management, can be covered under that palliative care branch. Anyone who has chronic pain issues, anyone who's an oncology patient, right? They can be managed um, and helped with um, through PASCON. Um, and they're gonna help with the symptom management as well as the caregiver support group. And I think that PASCON has some great caregiver support groups and um, like psychosocial counseling um, available to their patients and their the patient's caregivers and family members. Um, now with that, there does not have to be any form of prognosis. You know, you, know, you can work with PASCON for five years, 10 years, you know, whatever your lifespan is, right? Um, but we, when we we're talking about a hospice route, typically PASCON says, you know, they're going to, we don't get all of our patients from PASCON, but some of the ones that PASCON's in, they will step back from as we go in because it ends up being just too many cooks in the kitchen, if you want to call it that. Just too many hands in meddling with, with medications and just differing opinions on how to do things, and it gets confusing for family. Um, so our hospice is uh, primarily Medicare, um, and Medicare benefit of hospice, you know, you're, you're unlocking um, some assistance in the home. So we bring in our health aid, your nursing visits in the home. Um, your primary difference is that when you choose to go hospice, when, when you are given a prognosis of you are more likely than not to pass within the next six months, which is the typical prognosis for hospice. You also have to be okay with saying that, like, I want to stay home. If I fall, I'm not just going to rush to the ER for an x-ray. You know, if I have, if I have something going on, I'm going to call my hospice nurse who might come see me tomorrow rather than I'm going to rush to the emergency room. So you're essentially choosing to stay home and be home. Um, and those are some of the differing things. Of course, there are some instances where you have to go to the emergency room as a hospice patient, but our goal is to be home. Um, and so a lot of our, for example, our oncology patients, I mean, they're, they're just going to keep dying trying, which I think is so phenomenal, right? But they're, a lot of them don't elect hospice because that would require that they stop their chemo. 
um, until it's more clear later down the road. But your hospice benefit is typically meant for the last six months of your life. And with that, you know, we do have people who are on hospice a lot less and we do have people who are on hospice a lot more. I have to say, I love, I've never heard the noun palliation. What a great noun. <laughs> <laughs> no, that really is. It really is because you always hear about palliative care, you know, but what, you know, so what is it? It's palliation. So in, would you say that broadly palliation is just kind of, you know, focused on when I hear that term, I think of it as just being focused on kind of reducing pain and, and on right. what I always hear the distinction is quality versus quantity, you know, on, uh, that, that you, you, you have someone who is, who is now not totally focused on prolonging the number of days of life, but rather trying to focus more on how good is today and how good is tomorrow going to be and, you know, how good. Now, I think that what you're describing actually is a little bit more of the difference of palliative care versus hospice. Now, palliative uh -huh. care, yeah, they can, the palliative care, I mean, you can have, you could have any chronic illness for many, many, many years, and you want to enjoy those many, many, many years, but you don't want to be short of breath walking from the couch to the fridge, right? So pa palliative care, PASCON is working on how can we relieve those symptoms so that you can enjoy every day for as long as you can, right? Now hospice, of course, we're doing the same thing, but it's not... Um, maybe thinking about how can we keep things going for the next five years. It's how can we keep you comfortable today? The phrase, that I, uh, the line I always give families is um, we help maintain the highest possible quality of life for as long as you can. And then when you can't, we're just supporting the patient to be comfortable at home, right? So we're never going in, everyone has this idea of the word hospice, right? We're going in and we're killing people. You know, we're going in and they're just gonna die tomorrow. No, you know, we want you to be as, as high functioning as you can be for as long as you can. And at some point that won't be the case, but you have someone to call 24 hours a day when it's not. And, and yeah, I guess I, yeah. you know, I, I kind of try to emphasize to folks, a lot of people graduate from hospice. When I first heard that yeah. term, I said, you mean they die? No, no, you graduate like you get off of hospice because, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I, I, I was really struck this one case. I had a, a woman um, who had gone, I remember talking to her, her niece who was kind of her caregiver and she went to the nursing home and said, oh yeah, she's on hospice. I said, well, you know, that, you know, that, that, that won't last long. And, and I talked to her like two years later and it was like, oh, no, no, she's, you know, I said, so what happened? Oh, she's fine, you know? And it turned out that the, that the hospice as a result of doing hospice, she got off a lot of the drugs that she was on, right? When she was doing all this other stuff and she got better. I mean, she didn't get like great, you know, she's had some cognitive problems and stuff, but it, it was, it was a wonderful thing. It was just a wonderful thing. Yeah. Right. I mean, and so I think people are, are often um, afraid or um, being referred to hospice is too frightening because they don't understand what the whole plan is when you you know do join up with hospice. Um, so I, so do you have or need um, anything from your? I mean, like what about volunteers? Does the VNA have have volunteers that help out with things or? We do have some deficits right now. We are looking for another health aide or two. Um, we are looking for an occupational therapist and we are looking for volunteers. Volunteers is a huge part of hospice care that we, as long as I've been with the VNA, have never been able to provide because we do not have volunteers. Now I understand it is a little annoying because because we're owned by Cape Cod Healthcare, you do have to go off island to get cleared by occupational health. It's a less than 10 minute walk from the steamship boat, you know, and they pay your ferry if you're going to be volunteering. But it's a commitment, you know, and, and I have tried to advocate that, you know, if we could get them cleared here, I think we would maybe have more volunteers. Um, but I also think that part of it is the um, misunderstanding a little bit in the community of PASCON versus hospice. Exactly. And I love that PASCON has volunteers. I just wish we could share them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully we can at some point in time or else alert people to the fact that that the, that the VNA provides the hospice service because it, it was used to be just, oh, Charlene does it. Well, things right. have changed a lot since Char Charlene retired. There's a new director of PASCON. 
um, Deb, she's wonderful. Um, some new office um, people. Angela is is in the office now. Um, great staff, but um, it it would be great to combine forces or um, you know outreach for additional um, hospice volunteers because people would like to take the class. People are interested in helping. I think COVID, once we shake off this, you know, the COVID restrictions, because they have really had, you know, made a, a problem in the volunteering. Right. Um, you know, so our volunteers Cape side, they're back in They're they're in the home. Um, they is, you know, a DPH requirement is that our volunteers are vaccinated. Um, and, but they are back in the home, you know, on the Cape side they are they're doing you know they have music therapists who will go play the violin for you they have chaplains they have um reiki you know they have the pet therapy they have the companionship support the grocery shoppers they have all of those volunteers and even if you're someone who isn't comfortable going into someone else's home we would take you as a volunteer if you just want to go run to the grocery store to get 20 things and drop it at someone's doorstep um so those are the you know there's many avenues to volunteering that we can work with if we were to have them and we would be so lucky to have them and if, and if somebody, I guess I had two questions. If somebody wanted to volunteer, are you the person they call? Is that, you know, it, and I get- It'd be a good would, place to start. And, and, and so we can, we'll, so we'll, we'll get, if you can get us your, get the contact information to NCTV, they're great about, these folks, Katie O'Connor is doing the show right now, but these folks are great about, you know, adding that, you know, doing a banner so that people will have your information so they can contact you. But can you talk a little? Can you speak a little bit to this problem on the Cape? Because I'm I'm trying to think as to how you know this problem could be solved. What is the problem? With, what is the clearance that has to happen on the Cape for people who are volunteers? On oh, that? oh, sorry. So they uh, the occupational health is is run by Cape Cod Healthcare, and I have tried to advocate for it, but you know it's like. I, I, I'm not positive what, if it's the same for volunteers, so I don't want to misspeak per se, but with our staff, for example, they have to go off and they have to clear that they've been vaccinated for like the chicken pox and um, COVID and um, the flu shot yearly so that they know that we're safely going into people's homes. Um, and those are things that we don't have a contract with Nantucket, and I'm not quite sure that we will get one um, with Nantucket Hospital, but it's something that I have advocated for. So maybe we can close that gap, but um, it's really like a 45 minute appointment and it's 10 minutes from the boat walking. It's not a huge thing, but it is a thing. Right, right. But for folks who are here, especially for seniors who may be volunteering, it's for you know it's close to the boat, but it's but it's a boat trip away, you know, and so exactly. to, to be able to try to figure this out would be really handy. absolutely that's really, that's really interesting. And um, and so and so, is there anything else that you would like to share um, with our listeners about your program or what you would like it to become? Or um, you know, people have a long history with. Um, because it wasn't always the DNA of Cape Cod. It was several right. other things yeah. before that. And some things were run, ran smoothly and many things didn't. So right. I think we're off to a good run right now. And um, how do you feel about that? I think, I mean, we are so lucky for the team we have. We um, we have Allison McKay working with us. We have Stephanie Ray, you know, two, two longtime Nantucket people. Um, we have great physical therapists, Elizabeth Camp and Julia Heiss. Um, Jenna Darkow is our occupational therapist. Tracy Boucher is our health aide. You know, we have a great group of Nantucket people. And, you know, all we can hope is that we can keep expanding with that. Um, and, and I hope we can, you know, we, we are definitely low in our census right now. We don't have a lot of patients. Um, if, if anyone is ever admitted to the hospital and they feel they would benefit from VNA in the home, you're absolutely able to ask the doctor at discharge for a referral. Even if we come in and just say, oh, well, it seems like you're doing fine. You know, and we don't admit you, at least you had someone checking on you if that's what you would feel safer with. So you're allowed to ask for that. Um, it is insurance covered, which is great by most insurances. Um, I don't know, I, we're, just, we're just such a good team and I wish that there was a way that we could 
provide more to more people, but our census is what it is right now. And it's pretty low. So whatever we can do to boost it up, I think just knowing that we're here, you know, and yeah. knowing that it's an option to you will help. You know, I find that Nantucket provides so many great services, but there's no one hub of if you need services, where do you go to look for it? So we try with this show to um, advertise or advocate for the groups that do such great things for people. And, you know, because many of us have long memories, I mean, you know, I can remember Brenda Johnson running the, you know, the, the cottage care or whatever. And, right. you know, and that kept going for quite some time and was really consistent. And I think it's when, when things break and are rebuilt that somehow doesn't get into everybody's mind. So I'm so, I'm so glad that you're my neighbor mm -hmm. and um, I can advocate for your services. And I hope that people who are listening, um, you know, can, can do the same, but I'm very excited that you're around and I hope that you grow your team. And if there's anything that I can certainly do to help, let me know. Maybe we can do something at, at the salt marsh, you know, if things are kind of opening up. Maybe, the, maybe in 2022, we can try to do something with some, pa some PASCON folks and with uh, Kelsey and people from her team, just yep. to be talking, to be kind of talking through this issue. I think that it would be, be really, that it could be really worthwhile. Because I think what unites all of these folks is just this kind of real dedication to, you know, taking care of people, to really taking Absolutely. care of people and, and taking care of people sometimes during some really difficult times. And yep. so, and, and to just make people aware of that, I think would be really, really useful. So, so Kelsey, thank you so much for this. This was just, this was thank really you for great. having me. <laughs> thank you. And, and, and Allison, yet again, you know, thank you for just getting these wonderful folks who I think are just providing great information. Right. Uh, and and so, so, oh, so folks, there, oh, Kelsey, I'm just going to, I know you're going to have the contact information, but could you say, is there like a phone number for us old people who still use phones? You know, is there like <laughs> a phone number that people could, she laughs. Yeah. She laughs like, oh yeah, those old people, right? Is there a number that they could call, right? And then the, your other contact information will be on the screen, right? Right, so the main number to VNA is 508-957-7400. And from there, you can just ask to be directed to the Nantucket team and it will just come to me. And that's probably the easiest one. Kelsey, thank you so much for this. Allison, once, as I was saying earlier, you know, you've gotten some great people this year. We're, we're talking, folks, we're actually talking about going live. We were talking earlier about actually being at the studio so we can show off the studio, which is also really special. It, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna love it. It's like, it's, it's so we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Um, uh, Hanukkah's already passed, but Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, uh, and yes. Happy holidays, and we'll see you all. And Allison, we'll see you in 2022. Thank you so much. Excellent. All right, goodbye. Thank Thanks so you. much, Kelsey.